Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Amobi Okugo, host of Money Talks, a new podcast from a frugal athlete in partnership with Billion or Bust Media. Money Talks explores the world of business behind professional athletes. I speak with financial advisors, business managers, marketing and PR professionals who specialize in running the business of being a pro athlete. Tune into Money Talks on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. You can also find new episodes on BillionaireBustMedia.com and AFrugalAthlete.com. Again, BillionaireBustMedia.com or AFrugalAthlete.com. Good day, folks, and welcome to the Two Cents Podcast with Jay Richardson. I am your host, Jay. And uh, before we get going, as always, please follow the Two Cents Podcast on IG at, at Two Cents Show. Follow myself as well. Like, subscribe to the Two Cents Podcast. Check it out and share it because it's getting juicy. This first uh, topic of discussion is we got to go through week two of the NFL season. So let's just get right into it because it was such an interesting week. So much happening on and off the football field. And as you guys know here at the Two Cents, I want to make sure you stay up to date on what's happening on the football field and then just get into some stories off the field uh, that kind of help shape what's really going on. Um, So news and notes, first and foremost, just the games themselves. Uh, A lot of games went as expected. Some did not go as expected. And, you know, Thursday night I did not expect that Jameis Winston and the Buccaneers would pull it off against the Panthers just because of the Panthers, not just their defense with Luke Kuechly, but also I just thought Cam was going to start to look like Cam again. You know, I know Christian McCaffrey muscled up and looked like he was ready to come in the season and do amazing things. And then they fall to pieces. And Cam Newton, folks, something's wrong with Cam. His shoulder has not healed properly. He is not the same Cam Newton. Remember, he does not run the same, but most importantly, he does not throw the football the same. He's all over the place right now. I don't know if you guys are watching his arm. And it's weird because everyone's saying, well, you know, I don't know if he has the arm strength still. Is he washed up? I don't know that he's washed up. I think he's injured. I think he still can throw the ball out there, and he can still throw it a mile when he when he wants to. The problem is his targeting systems are off. Whatever muscle in his shoulder or wrist or forearm is guiding the football, that thing is not calibrated properly because the ball is anywhere. You don't know where it's going to be. And that's the biggest problem. Receivers don't know where to look for the football because he can't put it where he wants to put it. Something's really, really wrong. I think Cam came back too quickly. I think Cam should have taken a full year off of football completely. I think Cam it might pull an Andrew Luck at some point in the, in the next year and, and hit that early retirement button and then start feeling better and come back. I, I truly do. He's still such a young guy. He's so super talented. Um, and, and it's just, you know, for how he looks physically, you don't expect that kind of performance. Something's wrong there. The 49ers look like a pretty decent football team. It's been two weeks. I know. They look pretty decent. Jimmy Garoppolo played pretty well. 41 to 17 over the Bengals. So I know it's not it's not the best measuring stick, but I got to give it to him. You know, a lot, a lot of my buddies are like, oh, the Niners are going to be great. I'm like, eh, we'll see. I think Jimmy Garoppolo is overrated. And it turns out, you know, he's slowly looking like a pretty decent quarterback. So, okay, Chiefs, we knew what they were going to do against the Raiders. I love my Raiders, but the Chiefs and, and that offense and Pat Mahomes, even even without uh, injury wide receiver Tyreek Hill, doesn't matter. They're just still so, so, so high powered. It was nice to see Brett Favre and uh, the Packers squeeze one out. The Lions got lucky and squeezed. And squoze one out and squoze is even a word um you know Jacoby Brissett and the Colts came out there and beat the Titans who beat the Browns so apparently you know the Colts are better than the Browns even without Andrew Luck I don't know that's how you want to look at it but whatever the Patriots absolutely destroyed the Miami Dolphins like everyone's going to do this year and I'll explain more about why that will continue to happen that is that is only going to get worse for Miami later on in the show Bills and Giants, oh man, so the Giants performed so poorly, not to mention you lost to the Buffalo Bills, who have struggled, I can't remember when they were ever not struggling, Um, and you know, Josh Allen, he's just, I don't think he's the answer for them long, long term, I think he has a lot of talent, but the fact that the Giants lost to the Bills and Josh Allen should tell you everything you need to know about the Giants. And because the Giants uh, lost to the Bills and Josh Allen, Eli Manning, former two-time Super Bowl champion Eli Manning, former Super Bowl MVP Eli Manning, former Patriot beater in the biggest game of them all, Eli Manning, former little brother to Peyton himself, Eli Manning, son 
of Archie, Eli Manning, is going to have a seat. He going to the bench. You got to sit down, bro. You should have sat down years ago. Real dudes in the league who've been in the league a little while are still trying to figure out how Eli's hung on this long. I get it. I get it. You know, you're you're married to the owners, one of the owners' uh, daughters or whatever, and, and, and they love you, and that's fantastic, and it's going to make for an awkward Thanksgiving, but you got to sit down, bro. You got to sit down. And now you got to look at Eli Manning and his career and go, where do we really see him going from here? Because he, he, he's still a, a Manning. They're still NFL royalty. So he's not going to sit on a bench. Just know that, folks. Eli Manning's not going to be riding the bench the rest of the season and into next season as a, as a backup. That's not, what, that's not how Eli Manning ends his career. That's not The NFL won't allow Eli Manning <laughs> to walk out like that. I promise you. They're going to find a situation for Eli Manning that makes him nice and comfortable and at least salvages that Manning name on his way out the door where he should have been headed years ago. But that is what it is. We will see where he ends up. I just can't see him going... Uh, to Pittsburgh. We know Pittsburgh's got some quarterback issues with injuries to Roethlisberger. And, uh, well, hold on. We're going to get into another topic because all the quarterbacks seem to be injured right now. When you look right now at the at the NFL's QB depth chart for most of the teams, yes, Eli Manning is now benched. Ben Roethlisberger has been placed on IR, and he will have surgery on his elbow. His season is done, which means the Steelers' season is done, unless Mason Rudolph ends up looking like he can light it up like he did in the Big 12. Problem is, everyone lights it up in the Big 12 because there's no defense in the Big 12. So we'll find out if he can actually play against a real defense in the NFL, and we'll, you know, remains to be seen. Drew Brees is out. Um, the reason that the Saints lost is obviously because Drew Brees went down, and it's going to be very, very hard to win with anybody other than Drew Brees if you're the New Orleans Saints, even with all those weapons. Teddy Bridgewater, just uh, he's, not, he's not Drew Brees. Not yet, at least. I think he could be a good player down the road, but that offense is built around Drew Brees, and he is out. All of these quarterbacks are out, right? I mean, heck, you guys probably saw how awful of an injury situation that the New York Jets have where, you know, you got you got Sam Darnold, your number one. He's your, he's your first-round draft pick, your top 20 pick or whatever. He gets mono. Don't know who he was kissing, kicking it with, but – he, he's out. I don't know how long Mono lasts. I heard it can be a while. I know it's a problem if you're trying to start for NFL team. So he gone. And after that, you got, uh, well, Trevor Simeon, who came over from the Denver Broncos. They, they got him over there as a little insurance in case their, their star guy went down. Their star guy got Mono. They put Trevor Simeon out there. I don't even know how long it was, maybe 30, 40 minutes into the game. His ankle looked like it was facing the wrong way for a second. He's clearly going to be out. Had some x-rays, MRIs. I don't know if it was a dislocated a dislocation or, or a break, but it gets no worse than that. Le'Veon Bell at this rate will be playing quarterback for the New York Jets. And that might not be a bad thing because that Wildcat formation, at least you know he's going to find a way to get the ball forward for at least a few yards because that situation there with him. So, you got a lot of quarterbacks banged up. Um, a good handful out. And when you really look at the quarterbacks as a whole, you know, when you add in uh, Andrew Luck just flat out being gone and retiring and, you know, Cam banged up, doesn't look like himself and, you know, Drew is gone and all these different guys are injured and gone and, and, and you know, Ben, it just makes you wonder what's the future for the NFL with quarterbacks going down left and right. The NFL cannot market its best product, which is its high power offense, and that's what puts butts in seats. And that's why the rules continue to change every year to make sure they are protected. And now that they are not being protected, the NFL is going to have to look at it and go, what's causing this? Even though they shouldn't, it should be pretty clear. When you switch all the rules and you change it to where it makes way more sense to drop back and pass the ball more because all the rules benefit uh, the offense when the ball is in the air. That's just how it works in the NFL. Every rule benefits the offense when the ball is in the air. So what are you going to see teams do over the last five, six years? Pass the ball a whole lot. The problem is the more times you drop your quarterback back to throw the football, the more risk he has of taking a shot. Back in the 90s and in the, and even the early 2000s, on the average you saw about 25 to maybe, you know, uh, 20 to 25 dropbacks. Now you're seeing 30, 40, sometimes 50 dropbacks, you know, passing attempts in a, in a game by one team's quarterback, that's going to, to me, just uh, when you're playing a numbers game, the more opportunities you get to get hit, the more more chance times you're probably going to get hit. And obviously it, it, it's linked directly to these injuries. And now we have this situation in the NFL where a lot of guys are banged up, a lot of guys are out, and it's only a matter of time to me before guys like, you know, Deshaun Watson will probably be added to that list at some point. And then when you look at 
other guy, I think Cam Newton will be added to that list at some point uh, of injuries. I don't want to put that on them. I really don't. But I'm just looking at offensive lines and the situation, and I'm going, yep, I could see that happening. Guys who already look like they're playing hurt. Carson Wentz had to come out of the game in their big-time uh, game against the Eagles, uh, which the Eagles did lose. Matt Ryan uh, pulled one out of his you-know-what and was able to get it done in the end there. Um, and then, you know, the Eagles defense just, just, just couldn't stop them. And Carson Wentz had some heroic plays, but he is not going to make it through another season the way he's playing. Um, these young guys got to understand how important it is to stay in the pocket. And if you cannot do that, you are going to get hurt. Uh, another interesting news, not only are the Miami Dolphins imploding, which we'll talk about, but it seems like the Jaguars are having a touch of that too. Now you have them at 0-2 struggling. You're talking about a team who, you know, not that long ago was about to be in control of that AFC division, uh, having to go back and forth with, you know, obviously New England. And to see where they fall into, just to see the situation that they're in, uh, it's, it makes you wonder what the hell went wrong. I get, you know, quarterback, you, you want good quarterback play. I get losing Nick Foles for the season was a huge, huge blow. But, hell, they were able to get, you know, to the AFC Championship game with Blake Bortles. So I don't get it. And then to see this defense, you know, go from the stocky, uh, stout, just tough, gritty, athletic defense that they were, and now to see a bunch of guys on the sideline just arguing and Jalen Ramsey and this coaching staff are not on the same page. And they don't want to pay him but to me he's he that's a no-brainer you pay that guy right away you don't find too many locked down young tough you know corners that work like that that are respected like that and that can travel with the receiver the entire game and cover that guy up and can tackle um makes no sense at all so to me that's something to keep an eye on it seems like there's just going to be issues in jacksonville for the rest of the season but when we're talking about issues and we're talking about implosions i really really want to dig into what's happening in miami this is a very, very big problem. The Miami Dolphins uh, 29 season, 2019 season, I'm sorry, was just never meant to be this bad. Uh, at least according to people who live in South Beach, no one thought it was gonna be this bad. Uh, I don't know what their plan was for tanking. I'll just say they com came out early in the preseason and said, we are not tanking, we're gonna give it our best shot. And after they said that, they went on to pretty much blow up their roster. Uh, I don't even know how, how how better to put it. You know, starting with Kiko Alonso, uh, you know, the linebacker, you know, good linebacker, been in this league a long time, uh, comes into preseason training camp at, as the starter. Before you know it, he is asked to, I guess, be a pass rusher and do some other things that he wasn't comfortable with. He's trying to figure out, why are you trying to change my position? This is what I've been doing this whole time. And the new coaching staff is going, yeah, but we want to try something different. Next thing you know, he's not he's not with it, so they put him at, you know, they bump him down the depth chart. He's not happy about that. Five seconds later, he has an injury, and before you know it, he's nursing that injury to the point where they're like, dude, are you going to play or not? And he's like, nah, no thank you. So they trade him. He gets traded, so now you lose one of your top defensive players. Then right after that, you have issues with guys asking to be gone, literally asking to be gone. So then they start getting rid of top tier guys. Wide receiver Kenny Stills traded to Houston Texans. Then you got Laramie Tunsil. Uh, your first round tackle, you trade only, I don't even know if it's been two years since he's been in the league and you're already trading for a some draft picks and a lesser tackle, <laughs> a starting tackle, I guess. None of this makes any sense. None of it. Unless you're truly, truly trying to tank. GM Chris Greer for the Miami Dolphins continues to say, no, 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 I promise you, you know, these moves weren't expected, but they made the most sense for us. We're trying to stockpile all these draft picks. Here's the thing about stockpiling draft picks. I don't care how many first round picks you have. The first round picks have to hit. There have been fantastic players found in the second, third, fourth, fifth round undrafted. Most of the league is made up of, of fifth through undrafted guys. So to say that, you know, we're stockpiling all these first round picks is going to instantly equal you're going to be this amazing team. Uh-uh, that, that doesn't work like that. Look at the Cleveland Browns. I've had first round picks uh, and even on their defense and offense for the last, oh, I don't know, 100 years. And I, I haven't seen any Super Bowls yet. So I don't want to hear about how all of these first round picks are going to translate into winning football games. I think that is a cop out. I think that's what GMs and that's what ownership says when they don't know what else to do, when they know they're going to have a crap team, when they know it's over with. 
and they don't have the guys in the building to get it done. They just go out. Oh, we're just we're just stockpiling picks for the future. We're about to build something amazing. Stick with us. Stick with us. Stick with us. And eventually, they make every move they can to destroy their own football team. I just and I'm sorry, y'all. I might have to be 100% honest. And this is just the inner black dude in me. I just don't like when they do it. And it, it seems kind of predictable, but. Every time you see, you know, not every time, but a lot of times you see a team get African-American leadership with GM head coach. When you look at Miami, all of a sudden that seems to be coincidentally the same year they decide to just sabotage the team uh, from the executive level up. And that always gets under my skin just a tad bit. We won't even see any Fitz magic this year. Uh, it's just going to be bad for the Dolphins and just get ready for it. It'll only get worse. They got beat by everybody so far and they will get beat by everybody the Patriots you know had their had their B squad in there probably by the second quarter and everyone scored touchdowns everyone put up points and everyone's gonna have great games so every team that plays them is gonna be looking forward to putting up numbers for all you fantasy guys out there just know if your team is, is playing against the Miami Dolphins everyone's about to go crazy so you want to start any player that is playing against the Miami Dolphins I didn't even get into McDonald and some of the other guys the biggest thing that happened um, which was not surprising but it's just another you know case of what they're trying to do with the Miami Dolphins is Minka, Fitzpat Minka Fitzpatrick uh, you know former first round defensive back super super talented player they just traded to the Steelers and I get it the Steelers defense is crap but Steelers gave up a first round pick. Another thing I always say about how having all these stockpiled picks doesn't always translate to having a great team. Here you go with the, 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 the Pittsburgh Steelers who desperately now need some help at quarterback or at least to have some assets as they look towards the future if Mason Rudolph isn't the answer, which we hope he is, I assume if you're a Steelers fan. But now you're giving it away, you're, this first round pick for uh, a, a disgruntled Miami Dolphins player who, while talented, don't get me wrong, super talented, I would hope, unless you know you can find, you know, the next super, or unless you know there is no super stud DBs coming out and, and, and you feel like Minka Fitzpatrick is the answer you were looking for, that's fine. But I just feel like there, there, there was a lot given up to get him. Um, he is a good young player, but it just speaks to two of my points, which is one, uh, the Miami Dolphins cruise ship is going under uh, like the Titanic, and two, uh, having first-round draft picks doesn't always translate into the GMs being able to use them properly. But I guess it's nice to have assets, once again, even if you look in basketball, Philadelphia amassed a stockpile of, 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 of draft picks and talent over the last five years, it translated into zero championships, and one of them, Markel Fultz, is not even on that team anymore, and he was the first overall pick. So who knows what's going on, um, but it doesn't, picks don't always equal production. I, I will take players over picks any day of the week like real high quality players. So we will see moving forward how it looks for both squads. But right now we know a couple things about the NFL is always expect the unexpected. Um, you know, even in a league where their protected quarterbacks can't seem to stay healthy. And that leads me to my next discussion. Uh, I'll try to be brief about it, but it just needs to be uh, addressed because as you cut on your TVs today, it's pretty much the talk of, of, of every major network. And it's also a sports network that is, and it also makes sense to discuss just because so many interesting um, stories with quarterbacks and so many guys are injured that everyone is always going to come back to this. And it'll be a thing. It's been a thing for the last two, three years, and it'll be the thing for about another Eh, maybe two more before we finally figure it out. Colin Kaepernick, I don't believe, will ever play in the NFL again. I really don't think it's ever going to happen. So every time a quarterback gets hurt, every time a backup quarterback gets hurt, everyone's like the knee-jerk reaction, uh, whether it's Jamel Hill or whether it's anybody else who, who, is, who, is, who is a very part of the movement and supporter of Cap, which I have nothing, no, no issue with. You know, I think it's great to support Cap. I love, I love, you know, what Cap was attempting to stand for. You know, I, I really do. But the problem is the NFL is a machine. The NFL is a, is a, is a, is a different kind of machine. It's a, it has a different level of power. It has political power. The NFL is, 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 is an American institution. People have to understand that. And no NFL owner 
wants any one of his players to be too polarizing. NFL's, NFL teams like a couple characters here and there, right? You know, uh, and, and, and they like their characters to be trivial. You know, whether it be Cam Newton with his fashion or OBJ, you know, with his antics or even AB with his off the field ridiculousness, um, which is actually now getting more serious than I think he intended for things to get. But the point is, all of these things, they're not political. You know, they're all they're all just they're all just entertainment and, um, you know, trivial stuff that doesn't matter necessarily. And it's just to get your attention whenever you create uh an issue for yourself in the in the in the you know in the entertainment sphere out there in the world um really in the social sphere especially social media sphere right now where it's a political thing now you have to be very very careful as an athlete and the biggest mistake Kaepernick made was he let them politicize something that he meant to be inspirational and to be justice driven and it became a whole nother thing once that knee hit the ground during the anthem. Uh, we know why he was kneeling. I'm not going to get into all that stuff. I'm just going to say, no matter how bad a team's quarterback situation is, every owner, GM, executive is going to have to sit in that room and go, do we really want to bring in a guy that could divide our fan base? And that is the problem. Viewership, butts in seats, ticket sales, you're going to have uh, you know, pockets of people out there in, in our country who just based on the merits that they don't know or don't agree with with his stance or they're just so brainwashed into believing that he was kneeling because he hates America they're not going to watch they're not going to patronize the product and they're not going to buy any merchandise if he is on that particular team there are people out there that'll be like if he if he joins the team I don't want anything to do with the NFL just just because they don't like him never met him probably don't even really understand the issue or what he was or what he was kneeling for they just don't they just don't want anything to do with it because they've been Taught now and told now, and and and, and 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 you know, brainwashed into thinking that here's why he's doing it, and that is what it is. So, I uh, I also wanted to kind of address the idea that yes, I know he's put out a couple workout videos in the last two months. Colin has been working out with with OBJ and some other guys and throwing them the ball, and he always is in great shape. And he says he's staying ready, and I believe that. I just don't know that I believe that he really, really. I don't know that Cap's all that interested in coming back. I, you know, I don't know what his settlement was with the NFL. You know, some have speculated it was at sixty plus million dollars. Um, I know anything in that ballpark can make your life pretty comfortable. I know that the NFL can make your life pretty uncomfortable. Um, and I don't know that he wants that kind of discomfort right now. Uh, I also know that in another case as to why the NFL probably wouldn't bring him in, it is very hard to get hired by an employer that you just sued and won, right? Like you just sued the NFL and you won. You think they're going to employ you after that? Um, anyone who's trying to put out this argument that he should be on the NFL roster just doesn't understand politics and doesn't understand business or how spiteful businessmen can be, and they need to just, you know, let it go. And that's not that I don't want him to play again. I would, I would think it'd be awesome. And it'd be logical because I'm a, I'm a logic-based person. I don't care. I don't really get into the emotion of it all when it comes to decision-making. I think most decisions need to be made with pure logic um, because, you know, you might feel one way now and feel some, a different way tomorrow, but two plus two is four now and it'll be four tomorrow. So to me, the logic will always override uh, emotion when it comes to important decisions. So... Uh, it works the same way with these quarterbacks, and it should work the same way with Kyle Kaepernick. You know, yes, yeah, my emotion says I want him to be in a uniform again playing. I think he's super talented. I think he's got something left in the tank, and I think he's a leader. Problem is, my logic tells me he will never suit up in the NFL again, and that's all I wanted to get out. Um, I just want to kind of wrap up everything that's been going on, and I had to include that because that's something that I've been asked and people have been discussing, and it's like, dude, it's not going to happen. But a lot more will happen this week on the gridiron, and I can't wait for NBA to get back started again. Um, you know, just getting a taste of it with with seeing these workout videos uh, that everyone's doing, and uh, especially the guys that work out in, in that Black Ops run and Chris Brinkley's gym. Apparently, anyone in that gym does not miss because every highlight he posts, guys go like 50 for 50 for their shots. I need to go to this gym and shoot because I want to get that good. And I know if I go in that gym, I won't miss. And I just want to post a clip of me not missing because that'd be dope. Um, but that's a whole nother podcast. And I just want to thank you guys again for tuning in. Please like, please subscribe, uh, continue to support. 
Two Cents Podcast, and we will talk to you soon.